All right, so let's talk about the next question type in the reading section, and it is place a sentence questions. So how do we know that we have a place a sentence question? Very easy. Here we have an example of place a sentence question. So we have this four squares and we have this sentence and we need to put this sentence in one of those four squares, okay? So how do we know where to put this sentence? We always have to pay attention to the transitions. What is a transition? It's such words as first, furthermore, finally, here we have the word when. So these transitions help us understand the logic of the sentences, the logic of the paragraph, and to know what goes where. What is the logical connection between the sentences and where will be the most logical place for it, okay? So we always have to know the transitions, understand them, and know what they signal about, okay? So let's have a look at some of the transitions. The first transitions I want to talk to you about are are additional information transitions. And these are, for example, such words as and, additionally, also, as well as, besides, further, in addition to, likewise, moreover, etc. So if you see these transitions, it means that after them there will be additional information. All right? The next transitions are example transitions, such as especially, for example, for instance, specifically, particularly, etc. So if you see one of those words, then it means that this sentence is about the examples. So you need to know what is the logical place for examples, right? The next transitions are cause and effect transitions. The examples of these transitions are as a result, because, consequently, due to, hence, since, therefore, thus, so, etc. So if you see these transitions, it means that after them, there will be cause and effect information, right? So there will be an effect after a cause. So we need to look for a sentence where there was a cause and then after it, we will place this effect sentence, all right? Consequently, blah, 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 because blah, blah, blah. So that will be the explanation, the cause and effect, the effect of the previous sentence, okay? So the next transitions are contrast transitions. These are very popular ones. So this means that after one of these words, there will be contradicting information, right? The contrasting information. So we need to look for some kind of contradiction and look for the best place for this sentence so that it contradicts the previous sentence or contrasts the previous sentence, okay? Such contrast transitions are but, in spite of, despite, although, however, in contrast, meanwhile, unlike, instead, nevertheless, nonetheless, on the contrary, on the other hand, still, whereas, yet, though, except. So you need to really know all these words. If you don't know some of them, please learn them. These are all contrast transitions. They're all the same. And they mean that after them, there will be information that will be contrasting the information before. All right? The next transitions are conclusion transitions. It means that they will introduce a conclusion, so a summary, a conclusion, something which is a summary of the information said above, okay? So such conclusion transitions are as a result, all in all, finally, overall, in conclusion, in short, summing up, in summary, at last, etc. So if you see one of these conclusion transitions, it means that after it, there will be information that concludes the information set above, okay? So when we see these transitions, we need to see if that's the logical place for it, okay? So now let's talk about specific sentences that can help us understand the place for them, all right? So the first one is topic sentence. Sometimes we have this sentence, and it goes to the topic sentence place, all right, to letter A, because it introduces the topic of the paragraph, all right? We already learned in the reading section when we discussed how to read the text that the topic sentence always unites the ideas that will be discussed in the middle of the paragraph, right? So it's kind of a title of the paragraph, right? It just includes everything that will be said later, all right? So here we have this text. 
The Korean warrior kite is usually constructed of four or five spars tied together in the center. The spars form a sturdy frame for a rectangular cover whose center is pierced by a circular hole several inches in diameter. The surface of the cover is often decorated with stripes and designs reminiscent of the sun. This kind is especially suited for flying in strong winds. And we have the sentence, kite design varies around the world, right? So this is a very general sentence. And of course, best place for it is this place, is letter A. So because later they will be discussing a design, right? The Korean warrior kite. So one of the designs of the kite. So this is a perfect general sentence about kite designs. And it, of course, should go here to letter A. All right, so this is an example of a topic sentence. Sometimes you have a sentence which will perfectly suit as a first sentence of the paragraph. All right, let's go next. Sometimes there is a sentence with a specific detail. So we need to read the paragraph and know where is the best place of the sentence. All right, for example, Roquefort, for example, is a well-known blue vein cheese from France. Okay, so we have an example here. We have an example transition, for example, it's pretty easy. So we have a sentence that introduces an example. So we need to know where is the best place to put an example, this specific example. Okay, so let's read. Cheese is made from the curd of milk, although there are literally thousands of varieties which differ according to the method of preparation and quality of milk, they can be divided into three main classes. Soft cheeses are those with rinds and very soft, creamy centers. Of these, brie and camembert are perhaps the most famous. Blue vein cheeses have been injected with a penicillin mold, which creates the characteristic blue veins. Pressed cheeses are those placed in a mold and firmly pressed. There are uncooked pressed cheeses, such as cheddar, and cooked pressed cheeses, such as gruery. Okay, so we have three types of cheeses that were discussed in this text. The first one was soft cheese, right? And after they described the soft cheese, they have the examples, brie and camembert. The second one was blue vein cheese, and then there is no example. Right? And then there were pressed cheeses and there were some examples, cheddar and brewery. So, of course, we are missing an example here and we see that they were discussing blue wind cheeses. And this is an example of a blue wind cheese, Rockford. So, of course, we need to place it here. After we first got introduced to blue wind cheese, we need an example. So here we see that the transition, for example, helped us a lot to place the sentence in the right place. We also see this keyword blue vein cheese and we know that this has something to do with this term here. And also we see that they have a lot of examples after each type of cheese, right? So they discuss the soft cheese, they provide an example. They discuss the pressed cheese, they provide an example. So this creates a parallel structure. So we now see that it's always a statement about one type of cheese and then an example. So we can easily see what is the logic of the text and where is the best place to put our example, all right? Let's go next. Sometimes we need to put a sentence as a concluding sentence, okay? So, of course, for this sentence, the place will be here as a concluding statement, and let's see why. So, we have a sentence. This material absorbs heat during the day and slowly releases it at night. Let's read the text. In areas of extreme conditions, people have found functional ways to use limited resources. A case in point is the desert dwellers who, for thousands of years, have sheltered themselves in extremely functional buildings. These buildings are constructed of one of the most readily available, dependable and inexpensive materials we know on the earth, mud, the ideal insulator. So we see that this sentence has a transition, this material, it's a pronoun, this material. So we know that in the previous sentence, they must have talked about materials, right? Because this material, so in the previous sentence, there has to be something about the materials or one material. So of course, we see that here they talk about the mud, which is an inexpensive material, also readily available and dependable, right? So this would be a perfect place to fit this sentence because it has this pronoun, this material. So there is a logical connection with this last sentence, okay? 
So this is how we are trying to understand where should we place a sentence. We always pay attention to the transitions because they always help. This is how you do this type of question. And then we also see what is the logic between every sentence in the paragraph. And we see maybe it's a concluding statement, maybe it should be a topic sentence, or maybe it's a specific detail and we know where to put it. All right. So always pay attention to what is the logic of the sentences in the paragraph and it will help you to understand what is the best place for this sentence. Thanks for watching.